Good day, everyone. Happy Tuesday. We're here at the museum and gallery in Red Deer live again with a project for you. Today's project is patterns and polyhedrons. My name is Saya, and my colleague here is Mike. You want to wave hello? Hello, guys. Awesome. So for those of you who don't know what a polyhedron is, it is a three-dimensional shape with multiple sides. So that's what the word poly means, is multiples. Uh, so polyhedrons have multiple sides. Think about like a cube or a pyramid shape or an octagon, if you know what that is. <laughs> maybe not, but maybe you will by the end of this session. So let's get started. Let's run through our supplies. So the basics of what you'll need are a good pair of scissors, a glue stick. You'll want to have some fun, colorful markers. I also recommend having a Sharpie and a pen just for if you want to do any finer detailing. And the last thing you'll need are some polyhedron templates printed out on some, excuse me, nice sturdy cardstock. Now, these templates are from a website called mathisfun.com. Now, you may be wondering, how does math apply to these shapes? Uh, and that's because, you know, math is involved in calculating angles. Uh, geometry is the mathematical study of 2D and 3D shapes. So that's why it's on a math website. So there's lots of cool stuff you can learn there. But we pulled these off of that website. So. Uh, if you're following along with us and have your templates already, that's fantastic. And if not, you can always come back and watch this video after you've printed out some templates. So let's get started. I have already cut my shapes out, but the first thing you're going to want to do after you've printed out your templates is you're going to want to cut the excess paper off around them. And of course, when you are looking for your templates, you're going to want to make sure that you get the ones that have glue tabs. Uh, so if you go to the website under geometry, you're going to see some links by the side of each three-dimensional polyhedron shape. And it's going to say the name of the shape. This is a tetrahedron, uh, which when it's done will kind of look like a little pyramid like this. As you can see, we've, oops, that one's, someone bonked it. So it's going to look like a little three-sided pyramid, so that's a tetrahedron. When you go to the website, it's going to say tetrahedron net, and then under that it'll say tetrahedron net with tabs. So you want to make sure that when you go to the website, you get the one with tabs. So once you've got it cut out and ready to go, before you do any folding, what you're going to want to do is draw some fun patterns. So Mike and I are going to draw some patterns. What we want to go for as we're doing these patterns is we want them to be the same on each side of our polyhedron shape because that's going to give us a nice sense of repetition throughout our shapes and that's going to make a really kind of fun optical illusion when we fold these all together. Now, you don't have to draw the same types of patterns that I'm drawing, though. As you can see, we have a couple of these examples that are a lot more floral. So I'll leave these on camera so you can see them. I'll tidy things up a little so there's not as much visual distraction. Mike, what kind of patterns are you thinking of putting on your project? I'm thinking of, uh, yeah, this is a great question, is uh, I'm thinking of uh, getting to like patterns, like the triangular patterns, and then some leaves. Oh, so you're asking if you can mix some yeah. geometric patterns with mm. some organic patterns? Yes. You absolutely can do that. Of course, these are your artworks, and you're welcome to do them however you'd like. My suggestion of making each side similar stands, but what you put on all of those sides is completely up to you. 
Also, I just used two art terms when referring to shapes that maybe some of you have to, who have tuned into the stream already know. But perhaps if this is your first time tuning in, you won't be familiar with the difference between geometric and organic shapes. So what I'm doing right now are geometric shapes, which means that the shapes I'm drawing are composed of straight lines and sharp angles. So anything that is only composed of straight lines and sharp angles is a geometric shape. An organic shape is something more like this. Anything that is has soft round edges, uh, it can be blobby, it can look like an animal. Anything that isn't a geometric shape is an organic shape. Now where it gets tricky is that you can have straight sharp lines and hard edges in organic shapes, but they'll be an organic shape if those lines are in combination with more wiggly, wobbly, blobby lines. So today I'm going with geometric shapes because I really like how the geometric shapes look when we fold them up. So I just started, decided to start with a black Sharpie, but now I'm going to add in some funky colors just to make things a little more fun. I'm going to go with a combination of purple and orange because they contrast each other quite nicely. Now purple and orange aren't exact complementary colors. For anyone who is not familiar with that term in art speak, complementary colors are colors that sit exactly across from each other on this handy dandy tool called the color wheel. But there are different sorts of color combinations that you can get through using a color wheel. So complementary colors are ones that sit directly ac across, but you can also have split complementary colors, which are the, you choose one color on the color wheel, the complementary color will be directly across from it, but then the split complementary colors will be the colors that are on either side of the complementary color. So purple and orange are actually split complementary colors because if you start with purple as your base color, your complementary color will be yellow, but right next to that will be these sort of like yellow orange colors. So that's where we get that. Also, for our little viewers who have not yet been introduced to the concept of two-dimensional versus three-dimensional shapes, the difference is that a two-dimensional shape is anything that is on paper. So actually, right now, our triangle shape that makes up our tetrahedron is two-dimensional. So that means it's flat. If I hold it this way, it's just a straight line. There's no other dimension to it other than this flat plane. But three-dimensional objects cast a two-dimensional shadow, and when you move them around, you can see lots of different angles and shapes. So this is a kind of cool example, this project, of how we can start with a two-dimensional shape, and then through folding it, uh, it will become a three-dimensional shape and have, um, ooh, how do I say this? It'll exist in space differently than just a two-dimensional shape. How's your project going over there, Mike? Um, it's doing, it's going great. Going great? It's, oh, I see some nice colors it's on you. Uh, I made it simple, in case I don't have the black. Oh, did you want to show the viewers your creation? And also, would you like to use a black marker? Because I also am done with my black marker. Or I are you good? I like 
I like this. You like the, oh yeah, yeah. I like the colors that you chose. Some nice blues and pinks, kind of Easter egg colors. All right, I'm just gonna finish up my colors really quickly here. And then we're gonna get to the fun part that's folding. Not that we're not already having fun with the colors though, because colors are fun too. I'm just curious, do any of our viewers have comments or questions so far about any of the concepts we've taught or about the project? I don't see anyone in the comments, so I think we're good right now. So I'm just gonna keep going. What about you, Mike? Have you got any questions or thoughts I so far? got some questions, actually. You have some questions? All yes. right, fire um, away. So if you look closely on our uh, acre, there mm -hmm. are some lines here. For me, it reads like you have to cut it. Oh, you're talking it? about the dotted lines. Uh, yeah, the dotted lines. So the dotted lines do not indicate where to cut. They actually indicate where to fold the shape. Okay. That's a good question because I definitely think that, you know, when some people see a dotted line, they're like, that's a cut line. Yeah. Um, but for this project, we're actually just cutting along the straight lines and we're not cutting along the straight lines that go next to the uh, tabs though, that would ruin the whole project because you wouldn't be able to glue it without the tabs. Any other thoughts and questions or was that the main one you were? Um, that's probably it. I forgot the, uh, the question that I wanted to say, but it will come back to me. All right. Let me know. I'm just going to look at it. For sure. All right. I'm trying to work a little faster here to get our colors in. There's lots of fun things you can do with this project once your shapes are folded as well. Um, you can you can just let them. If you make multiple of these, actually, I actually made a set of five when I was doing the initial project. Uh, five platonic solids, and so they are named that way because of the philosopher Plato. And so they're kind of the five building block shapes of all shapes. Uh, so those are the tetrahedron, which is what we're making today. The, oh gosh, I forget the actual mathematical name for it, but it's a cube. There's also an octahedron, which is this. It's got eight sides, hence the octa, kind of like an octopus. There's also these really complicated looking shapes called a dodecahedron, which has 12 sides, and an isocahedron, which is made up of 20 sides. So those are also available on the website, but if you're going to make a bunch of shapes, I recommend doing those ones last because they are pretty complicated. All right, so we have got our shape colored in and ready to go. Now what's going to happen is along the lines that were dotted, I covered them in pen, but I know where I'm folding. You don't have to. We're going to fold very, very carefully right along the lines where the edges meet. We're gonna to try to do this as neatly as possible. So definitely take your time when you're doing this so that your shape will fit together properly. So now I've got all of my sides folded and you can kind of see it taking shape. But what I need to do now is fold my glue tabs. So when we actually get the project finished, we won't be able to see these. 
because they're going to be holding these together. So they're kind of the structural support. And make sure you get a nice crisp and clean fold. I like to kind of go over just a little bit to make sure they're folded really nicely. There we are. All right, and the next step is going to be applying, whoa, <laughs> a little dropsy. Next step is gonna be applying glue to our tabs. So we're gonna do this one by one. And you don't wanna be particularly sparing on the glue here. You want to make sure they're gonna really stick. Now, this is uh, some nice purple glue that's gonna dry clear when we're done. And when you're gluing the tabs, I want you to kind of rub them a little just to make sure that they're gonna stick really nice and solid. Just apply a little bit of pressure. Usually when we're gluing things flat, we encourage our participants in our projects to sort of hold their hand on things for about three seconds, three to 10 seconds. But because these are three dimensional objects, what I'm doing is I am sticking my fingers inside of the project and you can kind of see here that I'm just pressing along the glue edge until it feels sturdy. I don't feel like it's coming apart anymore now, so we're good. I'm going to sneak just a tiny bit of glue on this corner as well, just to be totally sure. And then we're going to repeat that with each tab. This one might be hmm. The last folds get a little bit complicated. So what I would actually recommend, uh, depending on the shape, you're going to have multiple tabs, but because the tetrahedron or triangle or pyramid is a fairly simple shape, there aren't many tabs to glue. So what I'm going to recommend is that you put a little bit of glue on both sides uh, that are going to be sticking together. I'm going to put a little bit in here as well on the inside of my shape just to make sure that I have enough for it to stick together really well. And again, I'm not sparing the glue here. I really want to make sure it sticks together well, so I'm putting lots and lots on. Throw a little extra on the extra tab just so it doesn't dry up on me. And I'm very carefully going to stick these together. I'm going to try my best to press these together. And it's okay if you bend into the shape a little bit because I can't stick my fingers in it when it's closed. But what I can do is sort of crease along the edges here. So I'm just pressing up and down applying that pressure so the glue sticks really well. And that's why I put it on both sides so that it is nice and sturdy. And now I have a patterned polyhedron that will look lovely on a desk or you could also, if you wanted to be really ambitious, you could glue some little glue or staple or tape some little strings to the top and if you made multiples, you could make a little mobile. So there's lots of stuff that you can do with these wonderful, fun little shapes. How's it going over there for you, Mike? I am struggling at first, but um, I think I figured it out. Oh, okay, perfect. any questions? Because if our viewers have some trouble, this might be a good uh, session for asking questions. Oh, okay. Um, what if I have this on oh, the top one? It's not uh, folding very, very good. It's not folding together quite right? Yeah. You may need to repeat some of your folds and crease them a little bit tighter. Um, so what I like to do is take my nail when I'm folding. I'll use a different piece here. Because sometimes if you haven't folded them very crisply along the line, they kind of bubble up and don't sit together real nicely. So I like to take my nail and just go over it like that. And then make sure that it is a really sharp crease. Uh, that'll help it stick together a lot better. 
and it'll sit it'll sit better against the rest of the shape and also just a reminder that when you are folding these together you want to glue your tabs one at a time because if you try to do them all at once uh, you're gonna have a bad time. It's it's a little hard to do them all at one time. So get as many folded as you possibly can uh, before you do your last ones. Because trying to glue an entire 3D shape and hold it together uh, is really complicated. Because we all only have two hands, right? Okay, so that concludes our project. So this has been patterns and polyhedrons. I've got my little tetrahedron there. So thanks for watching. Again, my name is Saya. Uh, I had Mike with me today. And if you would like to watch, re-watch this class or view any of our other live streams, they are all available at www.reddeermuseum.com. And you go to the tab that says blog. So all of these projects will be on our blog. And you can also find these videos on YouTube, Facebook, you can find the museum on Instagram and Twitter as well. Thanks so much. Have a great day.